welcome to Making a House at Home with myself, Sena Araji, and Fahima Mohammed, our guest, who is an NLP practitioner and a qualified life coach. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Now, today the topic we're going to be discussing is pride and arrogance. Um, could you divulge into that and just explain to us? What yes, you mean by of course. That? Um, Imam Ali alayhi salam did say that um, do not become obstinate such as one will meet destruction. So, you know, basically one who considers himself great, greater than another, mm -hmm. you know, especially when they think that there's no one above them. So that is very obvious as to how we can sort of describe pride and arrogance in the most basic sense. And there's lots of examples. Um, that Imam Ali alayhi salam did give us in the hadith, which I'd like to read, is like two things cause people to be destroyed. Um, fear of poverty and seeking superiority through pride. Mm. And also, you know, avoiding sort of like self-admiration and in this day and age yeah. with what everything that, you know, this generation is used to with selfies and social media and it's all about, you know, being self-centered. It's very difficult because yeah. that pride and that arrogance, there's a fine line as to you know being confident and having self-esteem and being motivated and driven and then carrying that forward to having that pride and that arrogance so we need to distinguish that so that we don't fall into that we don't fall into that sort of category of you know basically having that too much of uh you know loving ourselves to the extent where we think we are more and better than somebody else by putting them down or seeing them to be less than us. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. You know, you can strive to be good, you can strive to be, you know, on top of your game and being the best of the best, but not having to step on someone to do it or belittle someone to do it. Mm. Now that's the difference. Yeah. And even Imam Sadiq salam has said, just having a little bit of arrogance in your heart will sort of like, you know, not allow you to be entered into Jannah, into heaven. Mm. So even though we might look at it as something trivial, it's actually really big and it could lead to a lot of problems in the homes, you know, within our families, within even our work. And it's so funny because in this day and age, um, I just remember watching like, you know, The Apprentice. I don't know if you're aware of the show yeah. where, you know, people have to boast about themselves and have that much, you know, confidence. But it comes to borderline as in like they are better than anyone and they will even, you know, basically, I don't know, um, run them down in order to get to the top. Yeah, step on them to get step up. Step on yeah. them, exactly. And I'm just wondering, like, this, you know, society today that we're living in our cultures that are, you know, mixed and with different sort of backgrounds and how we have to be in business, mm. not just in our homes, um, it does tend to filter in our personalities, even if we're not that, that we feel we have to strive to that you know, to, in order to be, you know, confident at work and be seen to be given a particular position because we hold that particular trait. Yeah, they say it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out yeah. there. Yeah. So some people literally live upon that, you know, exactly. saying and they will strive to be better than Definitely. others because they think that if they don't, then they're going to be pushed aside. I know there are some professions mm -hmm. that you do need. For example, uh, being a surgeon is very male-dominated and women tend, unfortunately, I was watching a documentary about it, and, and women tend not to, tend to not survive mm -hmm. in that type of environment because the men are so um, competitive, they're so uh, arrogant, and they have so much pride in what they do that the women, the women tend to not have that naturally within themselves. They, t t t they try to feel, they feel a bit kind of intimidated when it comes to these, um, uh, issues. So I know there are some professions which require you to be to be arrogant. In, yeah. Uh, sometimes. Probably even in in like sort of um, in like the city, you know, with investment banking yeah. and in you know in law firms and accountancy, a lot of the city firms, you know, you find that. And um, yes, there are male dominant, but I find there's a lot of women out there now that are catching up. Mm. And they're being very, you know, powerful and empowering and they're screaming their way through. But at the same time, you know, that can actually also make them, you know, think that they got to be in that way and you don't. Mm. That's the difference. That's what I want to raise is that yeah. you don't need to equal, you know, be equal to them. You don't have to be, you know, the same as them in order to get somewhere. That might be the stepping stone in some cases mm. in order to get through the door. But people want to work with people that are actually kind, nice and generous that they can trust, that yeah. are honest, 
that are a team player. And that's what is the survival in the long term. And that pride and that arrogance, if it's not genuine self-esteem and confidence, will actually drive you backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference and people need to be aware of that. Especially when you're young and up and coming and you finish your university and you want to go out there in the big wide world and you think of all these personalities that we see on the media and this is how we have to be as an individual in order to be successful, I find that the complete opposite. You know, you need to be stern and you need to be firm mm -hmm. without pride and arrogance. You know, and even in psychology, even in self-development books, um, a lot of gurus that are from that field would advise people that are successful are the ones that are striving for a more meaningful life, a more purposeful life, and they have some sort of like fulfillment in their job and their career, and even with their families, and that's what gets them forward. Not dropping people, not putting them down, not stepping on them. In fact. Actually, psychologists do say the people that have got that pride and arrogance, as we see it to be in that way, have a lot of, you know, doubt within them. And that's like a cover up. So um, in order to address this, we need to think that the ones that's the loudest in the room, not necessarily the most confident, even the bullies that are bullying, for example, mm -hmm. they're not necessarily the ones that are the most happiest at homes because they're probably being bullied themselves in a lot of cases and yeah. they do it to somebody else. So we need to analyze the psychological effects and the reasons and the meaning behind all of this. And, you know, pride is a state of self-esteem and perceived as like, you know, self-worth for, for some extension. And um, the difference between pride and self-esteem needs to be sort of, you know, uh, distinguished. Mm -hmm. So when you have like low self-esteem, that means you're not happy, you don't feel like your health and your relationship is satisfying. And basically, you know, people that are really confident are someone who is happier and someone who is more fulfilled, and, but someone who is boastful. And they want to sort of, you know, even if they see a sad situation, they want to enhance it by saying, well, actually, you know, um, your house is not that big, but my house is massive, for example, you know, or my car is this. You know, you know that person doesn't have it and you want to be boastful because you really want to really rub it in them. Yeah, now that, doing that. Yeah, that yeah. is something which you find a lot. You know, come and see my house, come and see my business, come and see this. And, you know, you're posting up on Instagram and Facebook and things like that because, you know, there's a meaning behind it. There's a reason behind it because you want also some sort of like, you know, self-actualization as to you know I'm here this is me look at me this mm -hmm. is who I am but that's also cre when we analyze that that's because there's an, a deeper meaning and need for that individual to be that way because if you are really confident if you really do have self-esteem you don't need approval from anyone else yeah. not necessarily you know the ones that are important and the ones that are needed and you don't need to be shouting the loudest speaking in the highest voice and you know when you walk into a room where you know you feel that you've got to you know enter it in such a way that everyone sees you because there are people that have a certain walk even nowadays yeah. when they enter a room which shows them to be in a particular character yeah. which you know brings about a different you know sort of way of being and some people might admire that and other people want to step away from it so they want to be acknowledged yeah. as this person has entered the room. Like what, what, why do they need to feel that they need to be acknowledged? Exactly. In, in we need to go be, be, uh, behind that. Mm -hmm. And we should have pride, of course. You know, that gives us standards and levels in which we, you know, which is in, in keeping with our values. But then, and psychologists distinguish two kinds of, uh, two kinds of pride. One is um, called authentic pride, where, you know, it's basically related to social desirability with regards to uh, personality traits. Okay. So if you're like agreeable, you know, emotionally sort of stable, things like that, you know, because you're just like, you know, you're just loving life. You know, you have pride in having a certain way, a certain standard, a certain level, because, you know, that gives you fulfillment because you think that's, you know, that gives me some sort of like standard and level of success, yeah. you know, in any way. And even in your relationship, 
you know, you have pride because, you know, you feel proud of being with a particular person. Their smile is your proud, you know, is your pride, for example. Mm -hmm. In fact, most households should think like that and they will have better relationships, knowing how the other person feels, trying to make the other person feel in a particular way because that's you being, you know, at your best, you know, to provide that smile, to provide that happiness for your partner, for your spouse, for your children. Mm -hmm. That should give you pride. Yeah. And then there's hubristic pride, which tends to involve egotism, arrogance and that relates to something obviously socially you know undesirable and you know basically belittling someone you know showing that actually you know you don't really have that self-esteem because you need someone to be below you in order for you to look higher okay yeah. and we do it naturally a lot of the times we think oh it's 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 natural it's normal to know if someone's you know arrogant and have pride but actually no because it's actually coming into everyday living and everyday habits mm -hmm. because of the way in which we are socially adapting to uh, this generation so sometimes you may not be aware that you're doing yep. it at times having vanity as well you know oh, especially that's now. Very common now because of <laughs> yeah exactly because but you know what it, it depends like how you look at it because mm -hmm. personally I would say I you know post a lot in the social media and you know it's it's selfies it's whatever and you know I get the attention because people want to see your face I'm the brand for my business being a life coach you know I'm a particular way and that's what sells my service is because of who and what I am mm -hmm. um, people can look at it in another way and say well it's just you or whatever it may be but um, so it's also a way of looking at things and it is, it is something that you have to be careful with so um, people don't like to see people above them yeah and people don't like to um, you know see other people bring other people down and I just think that when you're at home um, as much as you might even want to have a persona of having that confidence pride and arrogance to a certain extent in order to help you achieve in your business or whatever profession you're in in your home you need to be very very different mm -hmm. and um, it's about having um, confidence and ability to work within your family as one and to bring that home together where no one's feeling above or you know below anybody for whatever reason whether it's status whether it's their their grades even with children yeah you know it's really important that we address this because we don't realize that we are actually putting someone down and we're actually emotionally hurting them because we are picking on certain things and their flaws and you can do that to boost them but there's a way in which you do it with every child that is yeah. they have a different type of uh, personality so you have to absolutely tweak it to, to how they are Ex absolutely competition within siblings as well it can be good but it can also go bad so if it becomes more pride and arrogance yep. over another then obviously they've gone towards the negative uh, uh, direction but competition sometimes can be good Yes. Um, and healthy for the children. But I guess, like you say, we need to identify in the yeah. home that it isn't going towards the, you know, the, the negative side. Absolutely. Of, of and arrogance as a, is a character flaw. Yeah. It's really a dark personality trait. And um, we all have a potential of a particular, you know, sort of, um, you know, tendency of being arrogant to mm -hmm. a certain extent. But um, in people with have strong fear of showing vulnerability and arrogance become that dominant pattern. So there is a pattern that psycholo uh, psychologists have identified for people that have this extreme arrogance and it's really bigging yourself up in public, you know, to show yourself to be more and to give yourself, you know, something, you know, which people will, you know, give you that attention and it's for your own self really. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. There's also ar arrogance involves uh, following components which are like, you know, if they had any early negative experiences in their lives. So then now they're adults, they have the ability to maybe show off a little bit more to sort of make up for the, the mishappenings, you know, in the, in the past. Okay. So that's where arrogance can also come in. So you think that it's just a personality trait, but there is deep rooted issues that may have occurred for them to be in that particular way. Okay, so right. people that have arrogance and pride, they're not necessarily the ones that are actually the most confident, the most, you know, having the most high self-esteem. They've actually come from backgrounds probably that, you know, there's a misconception of the nature of themselves. 
Okay, yeah. You know, or a life or, or others, for example. And um, they actually might have even a constant fear of insecurity. Right. For them to constantly feel the need to have this. So it's kind of, they could use it as a way to cover yes. up the, the, it is a cover the true up. identity. Yes, that, you know. absolutely that. Yes, okay. that's exactly what the next point is. Like it's a persona to hide all of, um, you know, the above that okay. we've just mentioned, you know, in adulthood. So, you know, we, we don't just disregard people with arrogance as in, oh, they're just, you know, horrible people. Mm -hmm. They are probably suffering inside to a certain extent, especially if it's to that degree. And it's something that's so continuous. Okay. And a lot of the times when clients come to me that are high performers in their field, they are lacking in something in their home life or it's running away from something in their home life or in their personal life. Mm. And that's why they never have that full satisfaction of happiness and fulfillment. That's why as individuals, we need to be so careful what we uh, perceive as happiness and fulfillment mm. and we will go in directions to get it thinking that that's the way forward when actually we're just suppressing what we actually do feel and need to deal with yeah. so um, there are definitely you know stages that children even in early age you know they want attention for example and if there's more than one sibling then they don't get the attention mm -hmm. that that could even bring about the fact that they want to be an adult which has all that power, all that attention, or you know, they will build themselves to be a particular personality to gain what they, d they didn't gain when they were younger. Okay. And you do find, you know, uh, for example, I remember even being in school myself, you will always get the quiet one, you'll get the most intelligent one, you'll get the one that reads a lot, and you'll get the one that's the clown in the classroom. Yeah. And the one that's the clown in the classroom is always making jokes, always laughing, and psychologists do say the ones that laugh the most uh, the little things even, even not the one that's making the joke, but the one that laughs the most at the littlest things is the one that has a need for something and they're lacking love. Right, okay. So, you know, they will just show themselves to always be happy and they'll laugh at the most simplest things. So they'll laugh it off in a way. They'll laugh it off to because they're covering up they again. Truly feel yes. So, um, there's many strategies um, to being arrogant and the messages are conveyed to the world. I mean, they will even outrightly say, well, I'm not arrogant. I'm just, you know, confident. But you need to know the difference between the two. Um, even confidence can be loud and can be miscrewed for arrogance, to be honest. A lot of people mm. find, especially when they, you know, strong, independent, confident women, and if they come across with information in their conversations to be, you know, something which is like, you know, upfront or controversial, or they're willing to address certain things, they are now labeled as being arrogant, mm -hmm. especially in the case of women. So, you know, that is something also that, we you know, but there is a mask there, that's the thing. When you're truly arrogant, it's a mask for something much deeper inside. Subhanallah, yeah. It's, it's something that we need to um, extinguish because it can affect our mental state. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you think you've got people around you, because sometimes people are drawn to people that are loud and arrogant and whatever it may be for certain reasons because they're in a particular position and they're drawn to certain people, but those people that they're drawing towards them not necessarily are the right type of people. Okay. And they're not the true friends or the true supporters or the true team that they need around them. Mm -hmm. And then when they do feel that they need to tend to turn to somebody, they don't have that real quality friendships because they're not drawing the right people towards them. Yeah, of course, subhanAllah. I mean, I don't think pride and arrogance really is focused on as much as other issues because no. we just think, oh, we brush that person's it. just, they're, they're a bit arrogant, okay, forget about it. We don't discuss it and we don't divulge into yeah, it Yeah, to know that there's an issue. There's an underlining issue. There's an underlining issue. But we issue. don't realize it we might just automatically stereotype it as being a negative thing as oh my god we'll just or we'll stay, stay away. away from them sometimes exactly, yeah, exactly. that's so true Subhanallah. but, but um, we need to have we need to also before we end i know we're coming to the yes, end yeah. but to be honest uh it's really important that we need to overcome this arrogance by you know trying to help them mm -hmm. and having humility ourselves if we feel that we have got arrogance and you know and to surround ourselves with people that we admire in the correct way 
so okay. that inshallah we can build ourselves to having better personalities and traits ourselves which we will create you know a, a system and a you know a sort of a field around us okay. that's actually healthy for our mental state okay and and i guess not take it so personal because I, yeah. I mean for me personally if i come across someone who i feel is a bit arrogant i wouldn't conversate as much with them because I'd feel a bit uncomfortable I wouldn't know how to approach them mm -hmm. and I would think maybe they've got an issue with me that's why they're acting like mm -hmm. that automatically but I guess I don't take it personally they, they like you said empathize, there are yes. empathize with them they might have issues that we mm -hmm. can't see and this is kind of a cover-up for how you know how they react to their their uh, true identity absolutely um, but anyway coming to, we have to come to an end I, I, okay we can yeah go we can on go on with this longer and longer <laughs> but thank you so much for here it's again been a fantastic discussion um, we're going to go for a break and inshallah we'll come back and we'll take some questions from our viewers so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh <laughs> Welcome back to the second part of Making a House a Home, where we've been discussing um, the topic of pride and arrogance. Um, now, we're going to take some questions from our dear viewers, inshallah. Um, and the first viewer we have is Fatima, and she says, My husband's family always show me arrogance because they believe they come from a higher background than me, and comments are always made. And most of the time, I can handle it by ignoring it, but, it's, but is there a better way to deal with this? <laughs> um, it depends, you know, also we need to know mm -hmm. what we distinguish um, and give meaning to arrogance. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we did describe it in the first half as to what arrogance is and pride and things like that, but you also have to not allow other people's opinions to be, you know, into your own way of being. And that alone, like I said, when there's a fire, you need to be the one to sort of like, you know, put it out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes being humble and being proud as to who you are because you allow the other person to even have that arrogance because you believe in what they're saying. And you're allowing them to say, well, oh, my name and my standard and my background and my village is whatever it may be, uh, higher than yours. Mm -hmm. And if you are feeling that vulnerability when they're saying it, that means you allowing that truth to unfold as it is. Mm -hmm. But if you were to sort of like generalize and say, well, yes, um, you know, we all have different, you know, backgrounds and cultures and we come from different things. And that's just one aspect that makes someone higher. But I've got other qualities and other things that makes me in a particular way, which is actually of a different level and a standard. Yeah. And if you yourself believe it, those things don't annoy you. Very true, yeah. Because a lot of the times, things that annoy us, it's not even about trying to stop the other person doing the wrong. When you believe what they're saying, then it affects you more. Mm. It's hard for me to describe this, but I can give you an example. If someone was to say to me tomorrow or, you know, that you're not good enough in something, I can either take it as in, I can't believe they're saying that about me because I believe them. Mm -hmm. Or I can take it as a learning to say, well, what exactly do they mean that I can improve in? Or actually, I believe I'm actually quite okay. And that's your opinion. So there's different, different ways, ways different of you. dealing with this. And it's hard with family because they can poke constantly and you can't get away from them. We can't choose families and even if we're married and there's other sects and whatever it may be that we're getting into and there's different cultures that we're getting into. Um, but again, having a strong mindset and having the psychology and the strategies and techniques of being a particular individual allows you to overcome challenges like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because these challenges are not going to go away. If it's not your in-laws, if it's not your relative, if it's not from an outsider, there's always something. It's going to be, you know, uh, picking on the way you speak, you know, the way in which you do certain things in the house or the way in which you dress, anything, anything can be picked upon. Mm -hmm. People are always looking for that. But you need to be the kind of individual who knows yourself well enough, who respects yourself well enough for who you are, regardless of what level people see it as. Very true, yeah. And that can make you overcome not just this, but everything in life. Mm -hmm. It's because we believe those people and that we get angry with them for saying it out loud. But it's not about saying it out loud. It's about you not believing them. So whether it's said out loud or not, 
it doesn't make a difference. Mm. Maybe do something as well to, to, to after you've realised that you know what I don't I'm not going to listen to distance them and I, yourself. Uh, dis distance yeah. yourself. Do something to show them. Listen, I'm I've become successful within as in what does that mean? Not to not to boast, but to sh to kind of say actually I can make make something work for me. What they're saying is wrong. I can see it. What's happening with my life? I'm progressing. Whether it be yeah, because usually um, people that are from a different background, which is they think they're higher, it mm. normally possesses where they come from, either medical backgrounds or they have, you know, financial wealth or, you know, they've got certain things within them that give them that. Or it's just mm. a name which is widely spread and, you know, it's well known, for example. And that's what gives them that sort of pride and arrogance and, you know, to show off that oh, we come from here and we are this and we possess this. Mm. Or, you know, we come from a particular you know, class country, tribes. class, yeah. tribe, whatever it may be. So that's their thing. But like I said, you have to bring something that's your thing, mm. which is different. It may not be the same, which is fine. Clearly, it's not going to be the same. Then to show that you've got that area, but I'm, I'm, you know, I might be lacking in that, but I've got something else to show like you just described. Exactly, yeah. So don't believe people and don't let them get to you. I know it's so easy, but again, it's like I work with people's mind, you know, to help them develop that. In, you know, to transform them so that they have more belief in themselves no matter what situation they're in. Yeah. And, you know, you get people that come from poor backgrounds, you know, from abusive backgrounds, from, you know, broken homes, whatever it may be, and they are really successful. And they are going places and they're doing things because that's their drive. Okay. So you don't need to come from greatness and start from greatness to be great. Mm. You just got to have that drive to want it, need it, feel it, believe in it, and you will get it. Inshallah. Thank you so much for that, Fahima. Inshallah, that helps you, um, Sister Fatima. Now, we have another viewer, Sarah, who says, My dad is a very proud man and worked very hard his whole life to build his success. However, I sometimes think that when he speaks, it can come across very arrogant. When he tries to motivate us and we are never doing well enough in our work, how can I make him understand that what he says puts us down and actually demotivates us instead of the opposite? That's interesting. Um, a lot of the time we want people to understand us, but you know, it has to come from us understanding them first. Now, firstly, instead of thinking that he is a proud man and it's putting me down, which is probably the truth of how you feel, yeah. but at the same time, understand the reasons why he might be that way. Like he's come to probably a stage and age in his life where that's all in the past, but he's still proud and he wants to bring it back. And obviously the generations have changed and he's probably still thinking that things are done in the same way and things should be expected in the same way. I'm literally just, you know, assuming here, by yeah. the way, from, you know, what has been said. But I'm just saying that when you address things in a particular way, when anyone addresses you with any information that they come to you, instead of analyzing your feelings towards it, analyze why they're saying it. That automatically removes anything that you're going to take personal, firstly. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good way of controlling your emotion. We get so emotional because of our reactions and our responses. So when you respond, taking away whatever they've said from you onto them, you become someone who is more in control, saying, okay, why is he saying that? And he's old now. He can't get that back. And he yeah. wants to do and replicate and maybe clone himself onto you, which is usually the case as yeah. well. You know, very a lot common. of, very common, which is nothing, it's harmless as well. But if he's really driving you and he's putting you down, it's like you never did it the same, make him aware of that too. Mm. And show him of the successes that you've actually gauged so far. And the fact that you're proud to be able to come and talk to him in that way. And the fact that you strive to do certain things. So there's so many things that you can address and do with this scenario. Mm. But firstly, have empathy. Empathy and compassion for whoever's talking to you. Because firstly, he's probably, that's his way of motivating you. It's not really necessarily hurting you. And his way is not your way, but you can educate him and make him aware of that. And secondly, you know, the generation gap is obviously huge. Things are done differently. Things are said differently. You mm -hmm. don't need to take it to heart. Yeah. And if you are taking things to heart a lot, then you've got to analyze yourself as to what are these buttons that are being pushed and pressed towards me. That's giving them and other people control over my feelings and my emotions. Mm. We create meaning for ourselves. Life is meaningless. When I say this, people get scared. <laughs> but it is meaningless <laughs> only because it's not that there's no meaning. 
we create the meaning. So we can create our, we can recreate even our past mm. from the same situation by giving it a new meaning now. And that is so powerful. And when people tell us things, we believe them again. And we roll with it and we run with it. And their story becomes something so personal. But it's because we've got something within us that we feel that we're not making them proud or we're not good enough. Yeah, we make ourselves vulnerable. Really we make ourselves it. vulnerable in that way. Yeah. And yes, there is a tendency as humans, especially when it comes to close relationships, that we want our parents or whatever it may be to see us in a particular way. But we need to also accept of our abilities and capabilities for who and what we are in that present moment in time. I cannot achieve that right now, but I'm working towards it. I might get there. And if I don't, that doesn't make me a lesser person either. It's not the end of the world, yeah. It's not the end of the world. Okay. So analyze, you know, your father. Figure out where is he coming from with that. Mm -hmm. You know, speak to him. Tell him how you feel when he talks in a particular way. And what does that mean to you? And analyze yourself. It's like, you know, it may be your father and you've got an excuse to say, well, I want to make him proud. But if anyone else comes and tells you something as well, you know, understand them. Yeah. You don't okay. need to take everything personal. You don't have to react and respond and make everything about you as well, even if they're saying it to you. Take it as a learning and develop from there. Okay. And, and, and try to, when you're discussing it with your father, try and get to their level, as in don't just... Uh, speak really quick or very harshly because if they're older and they're from another generation they might not react well to, to that of they'll course. see that as disrespectful yes. or disobedience say it in a manner that wouldn't you know with empathy like yeah. you're saying yeah and wanting perhaps, more understanding basically yeah and perhaps they once your father sees you act in that way you might start to think oh actually maybe i I could have done it, said it in another way, or I can approach this in another way. Well, there's certain yeah. things that he's not even aware of that you haven't communicated to him that yeah. you've been doing that makes him feel that way. So that will open up another area that you two can, you know, discuss and bond and connect and, you know, create even a closer relationship. Yeah. Because things are always in our mind. That's why even with my clients, I always say, whatever's in your mind, write it down. It takes it away from your mind, and then you realize it's not that bad, and you've dealt with it. It could be even a thought, even at the end of the night. And even in our Salah, we always talk about reflecting and giving ourselves time and space. We don't do that. And if we did that and if we analyzed things and sort of just taking it straight away, dealing with it straight away, not giving ourselves our time, then, you know, the reaction and responses are a lot, you know, less. Yeah. But when you do it properly and you consider the other person first, mm -hmm. even if they've hurt you, understand why that might have happened and what was your responsibility for them to think in that way. That yeah. gives you a whole new power that you cannot imagine. SubhanAllah, thank you so much for that. And inshallah, hopefully that's helped our, our viewer. Um, now we have um, a final viewer, um, Roa, who says, my husband and I have a loving relationship, but we have our differences like most couples. However, I feel that in an argument, I'm always the one backing down and apologizing, even when I know it's not my fault. And I don't want this to continue because I don't want to be seen as weak or walked upon. And I need an apology too. How can I get him to see his faults too? Well, when discussing pride and arrogance, um, there is obviously in a couple one who is more dominant and more powerful. And um, obviously with something like this, you would need some sort of coaching to understand how are you both communicating? Because obviously, if you feel you're the one backing down, then your language and your um, way of speaking and your physiology is not as powerful, mm -hmm. or it's not being understood, or it's not being heard, it's not being expressed in the way you'd like if you feel that it's not coming out always. It's one or two occasions, fine, but if it's always the one that you feel you're backing down, then maybe your way of thinking and your arguments are not necessarily met okay. to to what you actually believe. It's not in form because we have a mind of what we think and then we express it in our communication. But once we express that communication, it should give us that peace of mind. It should work hand in hand. But mm -hmm. if that communication is being, you know, outward there spoken and it's still not giving you that peace of mind and satisfaction, then the two is not being met. Okay. And I work with people to help them with their language, clean language. There's a book called Clean Language, actually. It helps you a lot as okay. to how to communicate and how to be specific, how to be precise, 
how to be able to you know unravel what's in your mind and clearly express it so somebody else understands and when they understand you more likely will come to decisions and come to the end of that conversation where there is satisfaction regardless of the result mm -hmm. but even if you don't get what you want you know there was understanding you know there was someone listening you know there was someone who was actually getting you yeah so communication is not just speech you've got to know how to use the language the kind of language and you know express that in a, in a particular way that you are actually influencing someone else as well yeah influencing is so important NLP neuro linguistic programming um, it has you know um, instances and strategies and techniques in there where we help you know people influence each other and you know we do this in various ways so you know your communication skill need to be really on point you know on top mm -hmm. when you want to um, get anything that you want and sometimes you can influence people without speaking yeah, it's not just verbal, it's yeah. body language, facial expressions, uh, your eye actions. contact, all these things. Can your actions, yes, your actions as well. How mm -hmm. you are responding as a human, how you are, you know, when we don't get our way, it shows there's a weakness within us, or it shows that we don't want it enough as well, because sometimes we're just comfortable with the result that we back off, back mm -hmm. off, and we back down, and we give up, like how she's just described. Yeah. I'm always giving up. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a little bit of urgency as to what you require and if you have that urgency and that and you, cre you create that worth and value in what you mean it will come out in your speech we have a lot of speakers today as well That's and right. that alone is something that you will see the successful ones that people are really drawn to to listen to and the ones that are not and what is it do you think it's content hardly mm. because we all can get the content and we can google stuff it's the way in which it's said. What I'm saying right now and someone saying exactly the same thing next to me will come out totally different. I'm not saying I'm going to get the, the, the mass of viewers. Hopefully I do. But I know what gets the mass of viewers is yeah. you feeling passionate about something, you believing in something, you feeling something, and you express that because of that inside belief that you have initially. So when yeah. you speak, speak from authenticity and be congruent then you'll never feel that you've backed down in an argument or you've come away from it not being fully satisfied. Mm. I know not everyone has that power, but mm -hmm. you can learn it. And you can, you know, there are traits within us that even if we're not powerful speakers, but we can find ways to express ourselves where we want something, we will get it through our speech. Inshallah, no, that, that's great. I mean, I've, I myself have, have taken a lot from that. So inshallah, that helps our dear viewer to, to deal with, with those issues. Um, but um, unfortunately, we have come to an end of, yes. the, of the show <laughs> again. And uh, for the time has just gone by, alhamdulillah. But inshallah, um, everyone's benefit, benefited from the subject that we discussed with Fahima. And uh, thank you so much for You're discussing welcome. Um, the topic. Um, and inshallah, hopefully we'll see you again for another episode of Making a House a Home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.